as block ciphers modes of operation. So before we go into the details of this topic, let me show you the importance of it from practical point of view. So if I go here, let me just uh, go for, if you, if you remember this tool, OpenSSL, and I'll try to do encryption and ask for help. So hopefully by now some of these options or ciphers that, uh, that come with uh, OpenSSL or implemented in OpenSSL, they make sense for you. At least you can, you can recognize some of them. So we have A AES, which stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. And what this number here, 128, you also have 192, you also have AES-256. Why do we have all these options? Because the key, remember the key for AES, what, what are the three options we have? 128, 192, 256. So this makes sense to us, like AES-128, which means it will use a 128-bit key. Now what is left is... Here, 120, uh, AES-128, but in here, let's say we have 128-ECB, 128-CBS, 128-CTR, or 192-CTR. What all this mean? What these, the last letters of these options, what they mean? Any, any ideas? This is what what today's topic is all about, is to understand these modes of operations, different options, different ways of using a block cipher. Remember block ciphers? What, what are the two block ciphers we have covered in this course? DAS, DES, and AES. Uh, so if you look here in DAS, do we have DAS? 128, 256, 192. Why is that? Why we don't have these options? Yes, that's by design is a 64-bit key. But AES, we have different key sizes, 128, 192, 256, up to us to choose the key size. But in, in uh, DES, because it is a block cipher, we have these options. Uh, we have these options such as we have DES, DAS, CBC, we have DAS, ECB, and so on. We have multiple options, many ways of using the block ciphers. Let's have a look. Let me see if I can see uh, RC4. Can you see RC4? What type of cipher is this one? It's a stream cipher. Thank you. Now, stream ciphers, do we have these options? EBC, CBS, we don't have, like RC4, and that's it. It's one, option, uh, it's one mode of operation. So block ciphers, they have what is known as mode of operation, mode of operation. Any idea what, what this could be, what this mode of operation means? No idea, okay. No problem. So at the end of this session, hopefully you will understand what this mode of operation mean. And you can see here, this is practical. You really need to be familiar with them for you to be, to be able to uh, effectively select which option. At least you are aware. You're not bringing your flower and you're saying, I'm going to use ABS or CBS or CTR or any other option. You should make an informed choice. That's why you need to understand these modes of operation. Is clear? So this is needed in practice. It's not just a theoretical concept. So let's start um, and see how it's going. So mode of operation, they make sense only for block ciphers. So block ciphers has this idea called modes of operation. So this diagram will not make much sense. Uh, let's start slowly. And then at the end, as a summary, I might come back to this one. And hopefully by the end of this session, this will be clearer. So let's get started. 
So the, first of all, let's see what is the problem these modes of operation try to address. So let's say we have a big file. That's one megabyte or two megabytes file, let's say. And we want to encrypt it using a block cipher like DAS or AES. What is the first step? What should we do with the file to be able to encrypt it? Any idea? Let's say, let's take AES because hopefully it is still fresh in our mind. What is the size of the block? AES. What is the block size? 128. 128. We take a block of 128, we encrypt it, we move to the next block and so on. So if we have a large file, how we will proceed? How we can encrypt the whole file? We have to divide it into blocks. What is the size of each block? 128, yes? And then what, how we would go ahead with the, if you are going to implement this, how, how would you do this? You have blocks, how would you go ahead with the encryption? So one way of doing it, here is first of all the modes of operation, what they try to address. We want to We want to encrypt multiple blocks of a long message or a long file. So first of all, we need to break up the data into blocks and then encrypt those blocks. And the way you, we do this, the way we encrypt those blocks will impact the security as we will see shortly. So the simplest way of doing it, the simplest way, take each block Encrypt it using the key. Like encryption, it could be used AES, DAS, or any other algorithm, and produce the ciphertext. So you do this, you inc each block is encrypted independently of the other blocks. Yes? So all you do, take the big file or message, chop it into blocks, and then independently encrypt each block. By now, you should be familiar with this. This is a visual way of saying this. This is a mathematical way of, say, of saying this visual representation. All it's saying, uh, so a message could be made up of, a blo of uh, n blocks. So I do a loop, an i from, let's say, one to the number of blocks. All I do for, what do I do for each block? I encrypt it using the key, taking the plain text and produce, take it through the encryption algorithm and then produce the ciphertext. And I do this for each block and the, each block is independent. I do the encryption, decryption in independent way. And decryption, exactly the same. I take, uh, the, this is the inverse. Encryption is, decryption is the inverse of encryption using exactly the same key. In decryption, what does, what does it take as an input? The cipher text, and it produces the plain text. Okay? This is a naive way of doing it. This is one way of doing it. Yeah? Now, what is the advantage of doing this way? We take each block and encrypt it independent of the other blocks. It can be not Sorry? We can encrypt all of them at the same time, which means, what are you trying to say? Yeah, because there is no dependency. We can do it in parallel. Thank you. That's the word I want to hear. Because they are independent operations. They have no dependencies between them. I can do them in parallel, which means I can the, the encryption and decryption would be very fast. Is this idea clear? Yes? This is the main advantage of this. It is very fast to do because I can do them in parallel. What is the disadvantage of this approach? By the way, this approach, first of all, what we call this mode of operation? Electronic code book, ECB. This is the one mode of operation, one mode one way, which is basically one way of doing an encryption of a long message. 
chop it into blocks and encrypt each block independent of the other block. And you can do this in parallel and you can do it super fast. What is the cost? Nothing is free. You begin in one side, you lose on the other. Sorry? Very simple. Simplicity is, is an advantage. Of course, simplicity is a big advantage. We try to keep things as simple as they can. Maybe it's easy to protect. Sorry? Maybe it's easy to protect because it's only XORing. No, this is not XORing. Like, you know the encryption. What is the what I mean here by E? What this E represents? Encryption algorithm or the encryption function. What what this could be replaced with? DAS or AES. It's not X or it's all the the diffusion and confusion we've seen before and we look through it multiple iterations. So definitely not. not. This is a very complex uh, function. It does it does all the encryption magic we have seen before. Yes. But last time, last two weeks, we focused on doing it for one block. Now, in real life, we have a large message made up of many blocks. When we have many blocks, there is a problem of how we do the encryption of the whole message. One naive way, this is the naive way, is just chop it into blocks and encrypt each block at a time in independent way. It gives you the advantage of simplicity and gives you the advantage of parallel processing, which makes it very fast. And what is the, 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 the price or the inconvenience or the disadvantage of doing this? Sorry? No, not really. Like, uh, it doesn't, it's not impacted or affected by hardware. It's the opposite. It's taking advantage of hardware. If you have a CPU with multiple cores, you can do this in parallel and go very fast. It takes advantage of the hardware features. It's an advantage. What is the disadvantage? Yes, Maybe it's not they just do the inverse That is true for any encryption. If you know the key, halas, it's all, and you can and you can break this. The key is the you remember. The key is the secret. The key is the secret. Once you know the key, you can you can break it. You can decrypt. Yeah. Any other any other ideas? No, it can be implemented. Encryption, all, remember, all encryption algorithms, they can be implemented in hardware or software. That's not the issue. So let's say, let's say PI or P1, let's say P1 as an example. P1 is a block. Let's say we have a long message. The first, uh, the first block, first block is, uh, it has the same text. Remember, let's say uh, in every block you have uh, the recipient, or the, the first block has the same text. In all, in, all, in you have multiple messages, and the first block always has the same text, like "Dear Mister" or "Salamu Alaikum" or "Hello Everyone" or something like this. Now, what will happen to the cipher text of the first block? So if, you, if I have multiple messages, the first block of the same, of, of multiple messages, uh, I have the same text in the first block. What, what will be when I do the encryption? In the ciphertext, I will get the same ciphertext or the same. If I have a block with the same text, if I do the encryption, I will get the same ciphertext. Are you following? Yeah? So basically, this is not very good for encryption. For encryption, the, 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 uh, the ultimate goal is that the output of the encryption, it looks random. You, you cannot, if you encrypt, if I encrypt uh, some message, although they begin with the same text, the output should be different. That is the ideal encryption. And the reason for this, the reason for this is that if you do a ECB, I will explain this scenario, and you will be surprised. Even with encryption, you are still, you can still be uh, subject to attacks. Especially this, this is known as a substitution attack, substitution attack. So let me explain what this means. Um, so first of all, let's take a scenario of a bank transfer. 
So if you want to do a bank transfer, most likely the message that will be exchanged between banks The message that will be exchanged between banks will most likely look something like this. Have a look at this message. What is the first block? The sender bank could be, let's say, QNB. The second block, the sending account. Let's say account one, two, three. And then the third block, the receiving bank, commercial bank or any other bank. And then the receiving account. And then the amount, how much you want to transfer. So this is a message. And this message is made up of how many blocks? Five blocks. Each block has some piece of information. Yes? Okay. So what this hacker somehow, they managed to intercept messages. This hacker managed to intercept messages going between these banks. So the way they can attack this system is they can go and open an account in, in these two banks. They go and open an, an account in QNB, open account in commercial bank. You can do this. I'm sure many people have multiple accounts in multiple banks. So far, there's no problem. Yes? Now, what, they, what, this, what this attacker will do, will try to send a couple of, tra of transfers from their account, from bank A to bank B, one dollar or one real transfer. They can do, I want to transfer for, from, let's take an example. I want to transfer from Q and B, from account one, two, three, to a commercial bank, to my account two, three, four. And I, I want to transfer, let's say, 10 real. Yes? So I do this, and then I do it again. I do multiple times. I do multiple transfers. There's no harm here. Both of them are my accounts. I can transfer from one to the other. And let's say I do another transaction exactly the same. Exactly the same. Have a look at this. This is Q and B. My account, one, two, three, to commercial bank. My account in commercial bank is two, three, four. And I want to transfer 10 real. Are you following? So, what the encryption algorithm will do? Suppose this is suppose this is the block one. This is block two, block three, block four, block five. So, what the encryption in this ACB mode? What the encryption will do? What the system will do? It will take the first block, take it through. The whole encryption algorithm, DAS or, or AES or any other algorithm, and then it produce it will produce ciphertext C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. Are you following? Yes. What do you think? This message here and this message here, using the same encryption key, same encryption key. This is for message one. So message two will have C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. Are you following? Using this naive electronic code book, using this naive electronic code book, what will be, what do you think? The, the, the encrypt, this is the encryption. This is the encryption of message one. This is the encryption of message two. What do you think the encryption of both messages will be? It will be exactly the same. The cipher text will be exactly the same. You following? Let us let me show you this concretely. This is going from this bank to from this account to this bank. This is the destination account, and this is the amount. Yeah. This is the message that I want to encrypt. Let me save it. Let me explain it. So what it's doing, I go and ask OpenSSL as a tool, go ahead and encrypt. This is the, uh, the algorithm, which algorithm I'll be using, DAS, and which mode of operation I'll be using, ECB. What ECB means? I chop the message into blocks, and each block will be, will be encrypted independently of the other block. And then this is my secret key. 
and I, want, I don't want to use any salt. This is the message I want to encrypt, and this is the output. I went ahead and did the encryption, and this is the key that was used. How this key was produced? We discussed this before. It was produced by, based on this, uh, this password. So here is the, the ciphertext. So transfer ciphertext. Here is the ciphertext. Have a look at it. Now let me do it again. Let's say this, I, I did the first transfer. Remember, this is the attacker. They have a, they an account in both banks, and they are doing a transfer. Um, so what, what I will do, let me do it again. Here is, they did another transfer with the same, exact same amount. Everything is the same. And now, let me uh, do this. So you can see here, take a look. This is the ciphertext of the first transfer, and this is the ciphertext of the second transfer. Are you following? Yes? What, are they different or the same? Exactly the same. Is this good? This is not good at all in terms of encryption. In the encryption system, like a, an, like a better encryption system, is a system that every time, even if, the, if it is the same message, you get a different cipher. You get a different cipher text. This one is vulnerable to substitution attack. Now, what the attacker can do, what do you think? If they intercept these two messages, what they can do? Sorry? They would know what to decipher from their back. Okay. What, um, so what they does know. that mean? What, what attack they can do? Once they have, if they know that this is the, the plain text, this is the plain text for their transfer, and they know that these two messages are for the transfer they did. They yeah. Sorry? No, there is no way they can know the key. If they want to know the key, what they need to do? Sorry? They need to break the key, brute force. The only way to break the key is brute force. It will take them how many how many uh, days or how many how many iterations? Two, in this case, uh, DAS, two to the power of 64. It's a, it will take them a long time, yeah? But if, if it is AES, it will take them forever. 2 to the power of uh, 128 is very, very long time. So they cannot, they cannot break the key, even if they have this. But what else they can do? Uh, they can swap their account number with the one like, they're receiving. That's it. Thank you very much. How, how would they do that? By knowing which block they can swap, because it's all the blocks. Yes. So because the, because the other, because the ciphertext is the same, the ciphertext is the same. Remember, when I do a, when I when somebody else, this is the attacker doing this. Yes. Now, if somebody else is transferring, if somebody else is transferring, the source accounts, it could be, let's say, they are transferring from their bank account. This is the, the number of the account, and and they are transferring to another. Account. Somebody is transferring to another account, and the account will be. This is the attacker account, 234. The account will be something like this, yeah? So what the attacker will do, they will basically come to, this is block one, they will leave it alone, it's not important. This is block two, this is block three, and this is block four. So what they will do, they have the cipher, they have the cipher text of corresponding to their account. Remember 234? They have the plain text and they have the cipher text. So what they do, they will take the cipher text of their account and replace it. They will have the cipher text of this one, of the destination account. All they will do, they will replace the destination account with their account in the encrypted text. And this way, they will basically bypass the whole encryption. Although the message is encrypted, what they will do, they will take the encrypted destination account and replace it with their, with their uh, encrypted destination account. And this way, all subsequent transfers from this bank to the other bank will be going to, to the hacker's account. One more time. This is the, uh, the attacker. What the attacker will do, will go and create two bank accounts in two different banks. 
Yes? And then what they will go ahead and do, they will do two transfers, multiple transfers with the same from their, from their uh, bank account to the DC, from two banks. They will do transfer with the same amount. And they will do this multiple times. Now, somehow they manage to intercept the messages going from the, these two banks. So what they will do, first of all, because they have transferred the same account to the same account, uh, the same amount, and if we are encrypting using ECB, which means um, each, each block, let's, let's suppose each of these pieces of information is a block. Yeah? So what we will do here, we'll take this block and encrypt it independently, and this second block encrypted independently, and so on. So if you use ACB, what is the problem here? If we use the ECB mode of encryption, what will be the problem? No, no, first of all, when I encrypt, what will be the ciphertext? Same ciphertext. Yeah, you can see here. If first time I encrypt, the first transfer, this is the ciphertext. The second transfer, this is the ciphertext. Yes? Okay, now, what the attacker would kind of know, they would know that these two, these two messages correspond to this transfer because they did the transfer, especially it's, if they did the transfer, um, let's say on the same day or same hour, let's say, it is unlikely, he, they will watch the channel and they will see some messages going on and they're exactly the same thing. So more likely than not, those two exact same messages must be the ones that the, the attacker has initiated. Yeah. So there is no way they can decrypt, even though they have the plain text and they have the cipher text. They can do brute force. Remember brute force? They will go and try all possible keys and compare the plain text with the cipher text, and they can break the key. But that will take them very, very long time. And by the time they, they break it, they break it, the bank might have already changed the key. What they will do, they, keep, they will keep watching the channel for new messages that will be flowing through this uh, communication channel between the two banks. And this time they will intercept other messages, which are other transfers. And all they will do, they will work out, for example, this part here from this a capital G to small r, this is the destination account. All they will do, this is the their destination, this is the cipher text of, let's say, 234. All they will do, they will intercept future messages and take this block and replace it with their own account. So this time, all the tra subsequent, subsequent transfers will be going to their account. So to summarize, to summarize, ECB, this mode of trans this mode of encryption, this naive mode of encryption, the main problem with it is that the cipher text that gets produced is exactly the same for the same message. Which means um, for uh, smart attackers they can they can mount a substitution attack against it. That's why we have modes of operation. There are many solutions to this problem. First of all, you, you understand the problem, that using ECB, if you have the same message, or if you have a repeat, uh, messages that has the same text, the same text will, be, will have the same cipher, and this is not good for encryption. Encryption, uh, like the, the cipher text should really look random, even if for the same message. Yeah? So let me just show you, and then I will explain. Let me try another mode of operation. Let me go back here and just try, instead of ECB, I will try something known as CBC. And I will explain what this means. Let me just remove this one. Okay, let me do the encryption. When I do CBC, there is one more parameter. In here, I only use the key. In CBC, I will use something called IV. I will explain what this IV means. Now, if I do here, this is cat uh, transfer. This is the this is the cipher text. Have a look. This is the cipher text. 
corresponding to this fund transfer. Now, if I run it again, if I run the encryption again, same text, and I do cut here, have a look. This is the cipher text of the same message. Exactly, I didn't change the plain text message. This is the cipher text, and this is the cipher text for the second encryption. Let's say these are two messages, identical messages. When we use identical messages and encrypt them using CBC mode, what happened is completely different cipher. Completely different cipher. The attacker, even if they are, first of all, they cannot, even if they did multiple transfers to, the, to their same account using the same amount, even if they intercept the messages, the, the messages will be different. And they cannot really work out, they cannot do the substitution. They cannot do a substitution attack. So the secret here, the secret source that makes these two significantly different is this idea of IV that I will explain. It's, it stands for initialization vector. So let me just go back one more, one more step and try to now explain it a little bit more. Okay. So let's go back to the original problem. What is the original problem we're trying to solve here? We have a long message and we want to encrypt it. What is the first idea that's come to mind? Divide it into blocks and encrypt and decrypt each block independently. Yeah, very simple and uh, it will work. But it has limitations. It will be very fast. You can take advantage of parallel processing, and you will you can make it super fast. But you are you could be subject to substitution attack. Why is that? The cipher text of same same plain text. If you have a plain text and you encrypt it, you will produce always produce the same cipher text, which means you can be subject to substitution attack. And I gave you the kind of the example from the banking example, a bank transfer example. Now, this naive way of doing it is known as electronic code book, code book mode, ECB mode. So, another way, a bet, this is one way of doing it. It's not secure. It is very secure, of course, but it's not as perfectly secure as we wish. For better security, we want to have different cipher text, even if we feed in the same plain text. That's our ultimate goal. So this, this definitely this ECB is not the best mode. Although in terms of performance, it could be very good, but in terms of security, it's not the best idea. So how can we solve this? How can we do produce a better, use another mode? What, could, what do you think? What could be another mode? Not any other idea where, where we can make this more secure? Sorry? Make them dependent of each other. So one way to do it is, tell me, what could be one way of doing it? The key is the same. The key for each block, I will use the same key to encrypt. But what I can do, I can take this ciphertext produced and feed it to the next encryption operation. And so what I will do with this ciphertext, what do you think? What do I do with, what do I do with this ciphertext? The magical XOR. Here, I do the magical XOR, take the, I, I want to, uh, to encrypt block P, P2, the plain text P2. How I do that? I'll take the ciphertext of the previous step, of the previous block, XOR it with the, the current block I'm trying to encrypt, and then go ahead and do the encryption. Yes? And do the same. Here you see, I, I want to encrypt now, let's say I want to encrypt P3, plain text block 3. So what should I do? Take the ciphertext of the previous block, which is C2, take it, XOR it, XOR it with P3, and then take it through the encryption. Of course, the key is always fed. And then I produce C3. You got the idea, yes? 
But what about the first one? I'm trying to do P1. Encrypt P1. P1, there is no uh, previous cipher text. No, I don't know the last one. Uh, the last one I have to wait until I go through the whole message. Sorry? Very good. So what I'll do here, uh, I'll produce some... How do we produce something? Thank you, random. I produce a random text, a random block of text. What do you think the characteristic of this text? In terms of length. Same length as the block I'm trying to encrypt. If it was thus, what do you think this site, this block should be? 64 bits. If it was AES, 128 bits. So I will go ahead and generate some random text. Uh, that has the same size as the block I'm trying to encrypt, and then feed it to this, feed it to the first block. So this initial initial random uh, text that I generate, what do we call it? IV. This is the IV. This is the initialization vector. Initialization vector. So for the first block, I take the initialization vector. What do I do with the initialization vector? Export it with the first block and then go ahead and do the encryption. Yes? Now, let, let me let me go back one more step and say, you see this electronic code book, ECB. So the same, if I have P1, it has the same, I have two messages, M1 and M2. And P1 in both messages, P1 and P2, sorry, P1 in message one, and P1 in message two, they have the same text, the same content. So C1 of message one and C1 of message two, they will be identical. Same text, same cipher, same plain text maps to, same plain text maps to the same cipher text. So this ECB, what in terms of probability, what do we call this type of, there is one-to-one -one mapping, always one-to-one. -one. One cipher text, oh, sorry, one plain text corresponds to one cipher text. <coughs> what do we call this relationship? Is it probabilistic relationship or is it deterministic relationship? It is deterministic relationship, okay? But now in here, if I introduce this one, remember this IV, it is random. So the whole encryption scheme becomes prob probabilistic. It's no longer deterministic. The same P1, the same P1 will be, once you, you do encryption, it will be different. Every time it will be different. Why every time it will be different? Because of the IV. The IV is random. And by the way, because there is now, these are chained. You can see here chain. You know chain. These are chained now. It's connected with one another. So what do you think this, uh, this will be... Uh, what, what is the, a good name for this mode of operation? Chained. Dependent, chained. chained, good, good, chained, chained what? Blocks. So what did we chain? Blocks. Cipher, block, chain in mode. Cipher, block, chain in mode, CBC. Cipher, what we just developed here is CBC, which is Cipher, block, chain in mode. Cipher, blocks, chain in mode. And what is the, the, the basic idea of this uh, cipher, uh, CBC, the basic idea? So if I want to encrypt a particular plain text, particular block, first of all, I look to the previous ci the, the cipher of the previous block, bring it along, export it with the block I'm trying to encrypt, and then do the export, then go ahead with the encryption. Now the problem comes with the first block. The first block, I don't have any previous cipher block. So how do I solve this? I, gener I generate this IV, uh, which is a kind of a random number, uh, the same size as same size as the as the block I'm trying to encrypt, and then I will use it. Once I do this, I get another advantage: is the whole scheme becomes probabilistic. Encrypting two messages, encrypting the same message multiple times will have always a different ciphertext. 
So ECB is a deterministic scheme, while CBC is a probabilistic encryption scheme. Is clear? Okay, and this one is very clear here. You can see, as I mentioned before, when I did uh, have a look at EBC, uh, ECB. When I did encryption with ECB, I only need the key. You see, it didn't, it, it didn't give me ID. It didn't generate any any uh, initialization vector. It did. It does not need it because every block is encrypted independently. Now, once I go ahead and use CBC, have a look at this, CBC. When I encrypt, it may, be, it may make use of an IV. And this IV, what is the size of it? It's 64 bits because this is DAS. And this, what do we use this IV for? We explore it with the first block and then we do the encryption using DAS. And then the, the result of this, the, the cipher of the first block, what do we do with the cipher of the first block? <laughs> we explore it with the plain text of the second block and we do the encryption. What do we do with the cipher of the, of the second block? We chain it or we feed it, we explore it with the third block and so on until the end. Yeah? And when we, we, when we want to do the decryption, exactly the same. We take the IV, of course it must be the same IV. Is it the, the IV, is it something secret? It's a non-secret value. It goes, it goes with the cipher. It's what, uh, you communicate it in, uh, in plain text, no problem. So when the recipient receives it, they take the cipher text, explore it with the IV, and then do, do the decryption. That is the, the basic idea. So give me one minute, I just show you how it looks uh, in, um, how it looks visually. Here it is, how it looks visually. Here is the plain text of the first block. I do XOR with the initialization vector. Then I encrypt. The key, of course, is a, is a parameter of encryption. I produce the first cipher text. What do I do with it? Feed it, like a chain it, and XOR it with P2, do the encryption, uh, produce C2, and so on. Uh, and I do the same for decryption. So this is, now I lost the parallelism. I cannot do this in parallel because they, they are dependent. I can only go with sequential implementation. Now, if I have a large file and I change only, for example, block three, all subsequent blocks, I have to re-encrypt them. If I do even one small change to any of the blocks, that block and all the blocks after it need to be re-encrypted. This is the inconvenience. Now, in, in terms of equations, this is how it looks like. That is the visual representation. This is the visual representation of this mode. And this is the algebraic representation. So the first cipher, I do encryption of P1 XOR the IV. And subsequent from I to the end, from I to N, where N is being the, num uh, the, uh, the number of blocks, I do PI, XOR, the cipher of the previous block, and then I take this as an input to the encryption. And IV is nothing but a non-secret nouns. You will hear this word in, in, in this course and in cryptography in general, in security in general very often. And nouns stands for number used only once. Yeah? You, can, you could use a true random generator to generate it. You should not reuse it. You use it once and throw it away. Never use it again. Always use once. And this is not, and this, by introducing this IV, CDS is a probabilistic encryption scheme, while ECB is a deterministic encryption scheme. Okay, so this is one, another more to, to avoid, what we're trying to avoid here, the substitution attack. This is this one mode. There are more. Inshallah, next time I will I will be introducing these other three modes: uh, C, CFD, OB, OFB, and CTR. And there are other modes. These are the, just the most common ones.